Well, here we are at the third Spider-Man Homecoming film, once again directed by John Watts. When it comes to movies, three is a scary number. You can dread it, run from it, but at the end of the day, it's still gonna hit. And here we are once again with Spider-Man No Way Home. So where does it sit? Is it X3? Is it Blade Trinity? Or is it a satisfying third outing like Lord of the Rings Return of the King? I'm gonna give you my thoughts right now in the spoiler-free episode. That's right, kids. This is a spoiler-free video. I'm not gonna say a damn thing about what happens in this plot, okay? You need to see it for yourself. And see it, you absolutely shan't. No, shan'ts, that's like shall not. You absolutely shall. That doesn't sound right either. You absolutely shalt. Yeah, that's that sounds good. I am gonna have a spoiler-filled episode in a day or so, so if you haven't subscribed yet and you kinda like what's going on here, maybe think about doing so now. Spider-Man No Way Home is two and a half hours long. It's a lengthy affair. It runs quick, it runs smooth, it goes down like a fine wine. This movie keeps pace. You're never bored, or at least I wasn't, or the two kids that I took, a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old. We went right after school. It was a decently full theater at 3.30 in the afternoon on a Thursday. And this is a theater that typically isn't very busy. So I think this movie's gonna do very nice numbers for Disney. And you know what? Good for Disney. They never seem to catch a break, do they? It's nice for the little guy to get a win once in a while, isn't it? Also subscribe for sarcasm. Again, John Watts is directing, and I will say, as far as this lining up with the other movies, I still think Spider-Man Homecoming is the prettiest looking with some of the more creative shots. I didn't see any real bad fake green screen or anything. It's consistent. It's consistently above average in the filmography department. As for the action, that's an area that John Watts, I thought in the past, wasn't the greatest on, especially when you compare him to Sam Raimi or even Mark Webb. Uh, I don't care for this, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, but the action scenes in those I thought were pretty well done, especially in Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is a bad film. This, thankfully, doesn't suffer from the trilogy curse. I really enjoyed this movie. My kids had a blast, too. The audience certainly had a blast. There were multiple scenes where people were clapping and cheering. It was definitely an endgame style of feel that I haven't had in the cinema in quite a long time. I brought up action, there is a good amount of it, and I do think it's definitely the best out of the Watts trilogy so far. Tom Holland's Peter Parker is definitely more confident in the suit now. He's doing more spectacular things, he's showing a little more of his strength. And another thing I really liked about this one is even though he still has his high-tech suit, this one felt very scaled back in that department. It didn't seem like he had an Alexa driving the thing for him at all times. He wasn't throwing 13 different web grenades out at people. He didn't call in a drone strike via some stark glasses. This definitely felt more like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man saving the day and not the Tony Stark tech on top of it. The one thing trilogies often try to do is jam in more villains and go darker with the storyline, darker with the tone of the movie. I think this film does a really good job handling all of that. Especially the tone of the film, which, yes, it is kind of kiddish still. This is definitely a Disney Spider-Man movie to me. There are some darker moments, there are some sad sequences. Tom Holland puts in a phenomenal performance here as Peter Parker, really getting to show that range and those acting chops off. Um, but yeah, there's still a lot of joke cracking. And as for the plot, I'm not gonna give anything away, but if you watch the trailer for the film, the way it presents the story is actually how the story goes. I was hoping that it was a misdirect and that uh, what transpires isn't actually what transpires, but it is. And it's a disappointment to me because I think it does the characters a lot of disservice. Not just uh, Peter Parker, but some of the other people, and it's a shame. I'm being incredibly vague here because I did like the movie a lot, and I want people to go in with fresh eyes and ears and enjoy all the senses as much as they possibly can without assholes online ruining it for them. Another thing that worried me about the trailer was that the jokes were gonna be just cringy as all can be. Thankfully, outside of that Scooby-Doo comment, which plays out better, I think, in the final product, not too bad at all. I, I laughed quite a bit in this movie. I, I, I shared a, a few ranges of emotions I wasn't even expecting. So even though I don't agree with the overall plot of the movie, the little moments all equal out to something pretty great. Uh, it's a pretty special film, and if you like the other two Homecoming movies, I couldn't possibly see you not liking this one. I was genuinely worried going into this, but now that it's over and I've had a little bit of time to digest it, it was very well done. I had a good time. It was a lot of fun. 
It had some genuine heart. There was some actual stakes in this one. Unlike the other two movies and a lot of MCU properties, I felt some things, some genuine emotion, which is nice. It's good for a movie to elicit other emotions besides, oh, that was cool. Ah, I got that reference. Ah, another reference, cool. Okay, well that's Spider-Man No Way Home. Easily my favorite of the new trilogy. Not quite up there with the Sam Raimi stuff for me. I, I don't, I, you know, you can say whatever you want. Nostalgia, better days, blah, blah, blah. I just like how those are done. I just like the style. If you saw it, let me know in the comments below. No spoilers, we don't need to do that. I'm gonna have a spoiler video coming up very shortly. You can spoil away in that one. We can talk about it. So subscribe if you haven't, like the video if you had a good time, and hopefully I'll catch you soon. Thanks again for watching. If you like the channel and myself, you know it would be a nice Christmas present? Share this video around for the holidays. Just say, hey mom or dad or, or brother or sister or complete stranger in this seedy back alley. Check out Adam Does Movies on YouTube. That's an easy breezy free way to show your support and it would mean a lot.